So how much are you prepared to spend on a brand new AM5 motherboard, Ryzen 7000 processor, DDR5 memory? In this video, I'll tell you how much these chips are gonna come out at. But first, a word from our sponsor. So this part of the video is sponsored by Armari, system integrator here based in London that deals with both AMD and Intel. Whether you want something small and embedded or something large and workstation-y, and you would have noticed that we've done a lot of workstation content here on the channel with Armari helping us by supplying those systems. So if you like what you see, check out Amari.com today. What's your minimum specification? So as I'm recording this, we are at a weird time. So AMD is doing this event here in Austin, Texas. That's where I am. And as usual with events, at least pre-pandemic, they'd invite the press out and we would attend the live, uh, t the live showcase of the announcement. We may get a briefing beforehand. This time, however, AMD pre-recorded the presentation, one that you've probably just watched, and we're in the audience. And we've been given about three, three and a bit hours to write or talk and film and edit about it to give you some of the details, you know, just so you don't have to go through all that announcement. So I'm in that kind of in-between stage where the, the presentation actually hasn't gone out yet, but we've been told all the information we're going to learn about today, at least. And the main topic of today is AMD's Ryzen 7000 Zen 4 base processors built on TSMC's N5 process. Now, there have been leaks, there have been rumors. This video here is to dispel as many of those as possible. And as you might imagine, Zen 4 is an improvement over Zen 3. AMD's top line number here is 13% IPC improvement with a peak frequency of 5.7 gigahertz. 5.7 gigahertz. 5.7 gigahertz single threaded. Now that's a lot of bits. That's a lot of hertz. And it's gonna hurt a lot. Well, it hurts a lot. Well, we'll see. The thing is, AMD is showcasing this as the fastest gaming processor on the market, the highest compute processor in the market, and the highest frequency ever recorded on a desktop processor at retail. And yeah, I can get behind at least a few of those. What did we already know? Uh, Ryzen 7000, uh, up to 16 Zen 4 cores, 5 nanometer DDR5 only, new AM5 motherboards with a new LGA1718 socket, and we got into some of the details of all of that. But let's go straight first into what those processors are. As you might expect, AMD is launching again with the four processors that we typically see from Ryzen 9, 7, and 5. Before we go into the specs though, I should point out, these processors will be coming to market on September the 27th. Today is just speeds and feeds. Mm -hmm. We'll get more details before the, the launch. We'll uh, go into some of that uh, later, later in the upcoming weeks. But if you want to buy, September 27th is your date. So let's go over those specs. So we have four CPUs. Starting at the top, as you might imagine, is the Ryzen 9 7950X, 16 core, 32 thread. 4.5 gigahertz base and up to 5.7 gigahertz single core turbo. AMD didn't talk about all core turbo here, um, but what we have is uh, 16 megs of L2 cache, that's one meg per core, which is a doubling from previous generations, and 64 megabytes of L3 cache between two eight core chiplets. This chip will have 170 watt TDP with a platform power tracking, as in it will turbo up to 230 watts in most high-end X600 or 600 series motherboards with the AM5 socket. This processor is going to retail at 699 USD. That's the suggested retail price. Um, you can imagine in some markets it may be a bit more than that. And uh, this is you know, essentially a $50 reduction in what the uh, Ryzen 9 5950X cost. So AMD is bringing down the price of this processor. Next up, we have the Ryzen 9 7900X. This is a 12 core, 24 thread variant. So before when we had two chiplets, eight cores per chiplet, now we have two chiplets at six cores per chiplet. Um, we still have the 64 megs of L3 cache, but we now have a 4.7 gigahertz base. So increasing the base a bit 
and 5.6 gigahertz turbo. So, um, you know, you're getting that sort of trade-off there. Still 170 watt TDB, still a 230 watt package power tracking, what you'll probably see in real life, with a 549 USD suggested retail price. Moving on to the more mainstream parts, we have Ryzen 7 7700X, 8 core, 16 thread, 4.5 gigahertz base, 5.4 gigahertz turbo, 32 megs of L3 cache, 105 watt TDP, and a 399 USD suggested retail price. I think those two match up with what was already in the market. And then Ryzen 5 7600X, this is the baby of the family, 6 core, 12 thread, 4.7 gigahertz base, 5.3 turbo, 32 megs of L3 cache, 105 watt TDP, 299 US dollars. AMD didn't specify which of those come with a cooler, however they did say that AM4 coolers should be working with AM5 motherboards. So if you're upgrading AMD to AMD, your cooler should probably work or you can reach out to the manufacturer to get a conversion kit. Out of these parts, you know, just as a broad, uh, broad overview, I think it's kind of impressive we're seeing these uh, frequency targets. That 12 core 24 thread with a 4.7 gigahertz base looks interesting. Though, you know, there's obviously going to be that task of do you want uh, six, six cores per chiplet or eight cores per chiplet because you're trading off, you know, cash per core and what have you. Um, but what AMD is saying here is a 13% raw IPC uplift over a geo mean of certain workloads. And I'll put the workloads up here to show. What we have on the low end side of uh, improvement increases is from AMD's CPU, CPU-Z single thread with only a 1% gain, that seems pretty low. Fortnite 3%, GTA 5, 4%, uh, things like uh, Puget Bench, Adobe Lightroom 5%, that's on the low end. On the high end, we have things like uh, Dolphin Benchmark, Watch Dogs Legion, F1 uh, 2022, anywhere from you know, 32 to 19%. This is all done with AMD's internal testing, so obviously when we get the chips in, we're going to have to verify that. At 4 gigahertz fixed frequency on 8 core 16 thread setups. They're using the GeoMean here, so it means the fact that we've got a couple of high numbers and a couple of really low numbers uh, means that they don't affect the average as much. I, To be honest, AMD's numbers here, it's a mix of single-threaded, multi-threaded, and gaming workloads. Normally when we talk about IPC, we normally talk about specifically single-threaded workloads. So it's going to be interesting to see how this breaks down between the single thread, the multi-thread, and the gaming. However, in the past, when we've done industry standard benchmarks around AMD's IPC numbers, they've generally been on the money. Um, so willing to give them benefit of the doubt. However, it's it's going to be interesting to see how how, how that how that plays out. So we have a thirty percent increase in the IPC, and at the high end, going from uh, was it five 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 point uh, yeah about uh, four thousand nine hundred megahertz all the way up to five point seven gigahertz? This is an eight hundred megahertz increase in single core turbo performance. Now, if I remember correctly, my fifty nine fifty X actually did about five gigahertz turbo because it's that sort of AMD floating turbo. So in that case, it's only a seven hundred megahertz difference. But if you multiply um, that frequency by the IPC, theoretically, you should be seeing around about a uh, let, uh, let me get a specific number here that AMD is given, just so I don't get I don't get it wrong. Here, yeah, it's this slide: twenty nine percent total single thread performance gain versus the previous generation at the top end at that sort of seven hundred dollar price point. That's impressive because Zen three was uh, Zen four is meant to be an iterative version of Zen three. It's not a new core design. So they're leveraging the fact that they're getting some minor minor IPC uplift. They're getting a large frequency increase, but they're also increasing power. AMD did have to say on power, and they've pulled out um, the V-Ray benchmark here, they're 57% faster in Chaos V-Ray than the, than the competition, but they've got a 47% better energy efficiency. A lot of that is down to the 5 nanometer plus some of the uh, improvements that they've made in the core. They did kind of break down um, the, core, the core performance uplifts, so it's saying out of that 13%, you got a small bit is the fact that the L2 cache had doubled, and we know that doubling a cache essentially uh, decreases uh, the miss rate by square root of two, so 44%. Um, there's a small improvements in the execution engine. We've got branch prediction, load store, and front end. Intel, uh, sorry, AMD hasn't broken down exactly what these changes are yet. Uh, we'll find out that in due course um, before launch, I'd imagine. 
what the what I think has happened here, they did say that about 60% of the improvement comes from stuff like the front end and the branch prediction. So I'm expecting here that they've gone from, say, like a four-way decode to a six-way decode, that sort of thing. One of the other improvements that this new generation has, which was theorized about, is AVX 512. Exactly what flavors of AVX 512 um, AMD hasn't mentioned yet. We'll probably, get, again, get more info on that. Though they have said that uh, they've done uh, AI-based workloads with the AVX 512. They're getting a 1.3x performance increase versus non-AVX 512. Uh, with just uh, FP32 inference, which is a data type used in inference. Or if you went straight to the int8, which is the uh, a more quantized version of inference, they're getting 2.5x using uh, VNNI, uh, which is something that uh, Intel brought in in their last generation as well. Instead of having a full-blown AVX512 unit in a core, AMD has confirmed that they're essentially double pumping their 256-bit units in order to accommodate this. So they're having to expend some die area for the decode of AVX512, but they're not having to pay that area in the execution units itself. This is why we only see a 1.3x increase in FP32. Uh, and we're now gonna be in this really odd situation. And this is a marketing message I think AMD should, should go down the road with, is they now have the only consumer desktop processor in the market the latest generation product of that company that supports AVX 512. It's going to be interesting to test that once we get this hardware in hand. One another interesting thing I think that's worth pointing out is while AMD is showcasing uh, you know the frequency improvements at the high end, what they're saying when if you actually cap the TDP, cap the power of the chip, they're seeing a 74% increase down at 65 watts TDP for the 16 core part. That's 37% 105 and 35% for a you know theoretical 170 watt um, fi uh, 5950x versus 7950x. Though you having a 74% increase in performance at 65 watts, that's crazy. That that really is. Um, I don't think they've mentioned exactly what benchmark they've run here. It's probably in the footnotes and it's probably a multi-threaded workload. So we'll see. One point to mention on the five nanometer process used in these chips is that it. It is uh, TSMC's fourth generation FinFET. What they actually said is they've done amount of design technology optimization uh, with TSMC, such that this is essentially an N5 HPC uh, version. And I know that TSMC have an N3 HPC version because uh, they've already done, uh, they've already presented that in an event. I actually want to do a video on that. But the point is, what, if you if you are a big company like AMD, like Apple, um, like Nvidia, you can go to TSMC, you can go to a Samsung and say, look, we want an optimized version of the process just for us based on the way we build our cores. And TSMC will go do that. It takes a lot of time, but you effectively, the, the, the saying is that you effectively gain a node's worth of performance by doing that work. If you just use a standard cell, standard cell libraries off the shelf, send your chip away to get manufactured, then you get a certain amount of performance. But if you actually do the hard work in uh, co-optimization of the design, then you get an equivalent nodes increase in performance. So it's interesting to hear AMD talk about that. The other point about the core design that they're at least t t telling us today is that the Zen 4 core built on uh, TSMC N5 is 3.84 square millimeters. That's if you include the cores in the L2 compared to Intel's Golden Cove, which is their P cores, which is 7.46 square millimeters. So we're getting uh, AMD saying they've got 50, almost 50% best, better area efficiency than the competition, and also 47% more energy efficient than the competition. Obviously, Intel has its also next generation to come out, though it'll be interesting to see where the performance gains lie there. We did get an example of the CPU roadmap, so AMD confirmed that there is going to be vCache versions of this uh, coming uh, next year. I think they said the beginning of next year, though I have to double confirm that. There's then it's going to be Zen 4C on, on the Enterprise, and then uh, Zen 5 going on, on to 4 and 3 and I They just say Zen 5 is coming 2024. Um, so bear that in mind. I did see on one of these slides, I can't find it now, that I think the all-core frequency of the 7950X is about 5.1 gigahertz. Um, AMD has some numbers. I guess I'll throw up this slide. Geekbench single thread performance. 
showcasing it scoring 2275 for the Ryzen 9 7950X. So there was an opportunity to ask questions at the end. I asked the one that I always ask Lisa about Threadripper, um, about whether the standard Threadripper is now essentially dead, and uh, what about Zen 4 coming to Threadripper. So there was a slide from Financial Analyst Day that said Zen 4 Threadripper, but it didn't say Threadripper Pro. The answer I got was actually from David McAfee, who runs a client PC business. He said that, that uh, actually, you know, Lisa said they're very cognizant of the market. Uh, David says that where it makes sense, we'll introduce those products into the ecosystem, which is kind of the generic non-answer. But they say they, they are hearing the customers that enjoy those products, you know, where they need them, where they want them. Um, AMD did say they're not going to be capacity constrained with Ryzen 7000 series. So that's interesting to hear. And they also had um, a one extra thing, which is which is now their new thing, the one extra thing at the end of the presentation. This was that RDNA 3 is coming. It's running in their labs. It's using five nanometer chiplets. So we have a chiplet based GPU and it's offering 50% performance for what benefits over RDNA 2. So that's RDNA, RDNA 3 and the picture that they showed showed a, um, a standard Radeon um, GPU heat spreader and it had like three red lines um, on three of the fins because RDNA 3, I guess. So, I mean, there, I do have another um, bunch of questions that I still want to ask AMD, um, though at this point, I think if I ask them, I probably won't be able to tell you the answers, at least in, until launch date. Things like um, ECC support, um, things like overclocking. They did say a little bit about overclocking, saying how um, they do have extended profiles for overclocking, now called AMD Expo. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yes, on on in terms of motherboards, they're saying that they're committed to supporting AM5 out to twenty twenty five plus. So it's what twenty twenty two now, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. That means um, Zen five is coming out in twenty four. Zen six will probably get out in twenty five. Zen seven. So. Realistically, I expect AM5 to support at least Zen 4, Zen 5, and Zen 6. Zen 7, I'd put a question mark on. Um, but they do understand that they have to be committed over a period of time. Um, the one argument is AM4 maybe went on too long, um, and there was like you know a delay to go into new technology. Especially now we have PCI 5 and PCI 6 is now a fast follow-on. Will will future AM5 products support PCI 6, and how does that confuse everything? Because some of the motherboards that even are coming out. Uh, with these chips today, um, or at least later this month. Some of them are going to be PCI 4 only, some of them are going to be PCI 5 only. We're going to get PCI 5 storage in November, uh, that sort of thing. I was actually sitting next to the rep from Fizen, and he, he nudged me and said, if you ask a Fizen question, I'll give you a roadmap. Uh, but unfortunately, I had to ask, um, uh, you know, the thread of a question, because because that, that's what I do. I'm trying to think here, what, what else... Um, uh, yeah, okay, so Diaria versus Zen 3 is down by 18%. Alongside with the doubling of the L2 cache, they've also increased the size of the uh, op cache by 1.5x. What, 1 so if you're interested um, in the, the, the raw core design, we at least know that today. New front-end design, I've, I've kind of gone over that. They did give some gaming numbers. So at 1080p gaming, they're expecting a plus 15% improvement over the 5950X. They didn't talk about 4K. Um, they didn't talk about you know ultra settings. They'd say at 1080p, that number ranges from say 6% in Borderlands 3 to 32% in Dota 2. What I expect to see is the, the chips and the motherboards come out on September 27th. You know, people go buy them. There'll be a few weeks of BIOS updates because it is a new chipset and just getting those things right. I wonder how complete AVX 512 is, even though you could argue that's kind of like a minor thing. One thing we didn't touch upon was the IO die uh, on, on these processors. So we already know the IO die on Ryzen 7000 is going to be built at TSMC 6 nanometer. So that thankfully should be lower power and the infinity fabric between them should be lower power. There's also going to be integrated graphics inside, integrated RDNA 2, though we expect that this just to be the you know, minor like one or two compute units. It's literally just enough to have your HDMI attached it's, uh, and be able to debug your system. It's not going to be there to do any additional uh, compute resources or anything like that. It's essentially going to be a backup. And if it's, you know, there's not, if there's a die cost that's, you know, 
in almost insignificant, then it's probably a worthwhile addition. That being said, we have currently seen motherboards, say from ASUS, that are actually dropping the audio from the motherboard. Yeah, we've seen motherboards before just drop the video outputs. So it's, it's going to be swings and roundabouts. With the motherboards, the X series is coming out in uh, September. The B series, uh, B650, B650 Extreme, they're going to come out in October or November, I think. I think it was October. Yeah, October. And uh, yeah, with, with both with both X670 and B650, there's going to be an extreme version, which is PCIe 5 graphics and storage. The non-extreme is just going to be PCIe 5 storage. And there might be another one below that that's just PCIe 4. I still have a lot of questions. I really want to know about the core up microarchitecture. I want to see what's changed with the caches. I want to see how they're doing the AVX 512 because that's going to be important for, for a certain amount of tests. So, yeah, it's not really a consumer uh, type of instruction set. It may pick up Steam. I don't think AMD is putting many resources behind software, uh, uh, software vendors or ISVs to actually go support it that aren't supporting the Intel versions already. It'd be interesting to see what the overlap with Intel's AVX 512 is going to be. And, you know, speaking to people like Mike Clark, to Joe Macri, um, I don't think Sam Nafseg is at, actually at this event. Uh, I know that Lisa and Mark have actually already had to fly out because they've got customer meetings, so they're not available um, for, for briefings. But going to get some access, um, hopefully, you know, between now and, uh, and and launch to learn about all this stuff so I can present to you how this architecture differs to previous, the performance uplifts, and then come launch day, we'll get lots of data out. So um, stay tuned for that. If you've got any questions to do with to do with Zen 4, to do with Ryzen 7000, things you want me to test, there's a comment section. You have to use it. My main specification here is, I wonder, because... Uh, the graph with the 65 watts showing 74% increase over previous gen. Maybe we just buy the 16 cores and run it at 65 watts. That's like a quarter of the power, and it's probably more than half the frequency.